So this is a classic combinatorics problem. We're going to choose three people uh, from among five married couples, so ten total people, so that the committee does not include two people who are married. So standard way to do this is to do the total ways there are of picking a three-person committee minus the number of committees that do have a married couple. So the total, there are ten total people choosing three for a three-person committee minus the committees you know we don't want which is the committees that have a married couple on them it always helps to verbalize uh, things you know before you worry about the numbers so what what do I need to pick here well I need to pick a married couple and then I need to pick a third person and this is importantly and a couple and a third person so for the couples you know, how many are there to choose from? There's five to choose from, and I'll be picking one couple. So, like, here's my, you know, three-person committee I'm visualizing. The couple takes up two slots. I only have room for one couple. Then, for the third slot, okay, there were ten people. I've picked a couple. That leaves eight people left, and I just need to choose one. And it's and a couple and a third person, so I multiply. Or they're they're combining, you know, for a, these two things are combining for a complete outcome, so they have a multiplicative relationship. So then I just do this math. One twenty minus five choose one is just five. Eight choose one is just eight. So one twenty minus forty gives me eighty. <laughs> Now there's another way not to not to mix approaches. If this this way makes sense, good. That's the way we should do it. Uh, there are some situations in which you can w treat combinations as if they're like permutations for a second, and then divide by the number of slots you chose factorial. So, you, you, you know we know this is combinations, not permutations, because we don't care about the order in which we pick things. But let's just like pretend it's a permutation for a second, and do this straight up where we don't pick a married couple. So in the first slot, well, to start with, there's just 10 people to start from. Okay, now in the next slot, I can't pick that person that I just picked, so nine people, and I also can't pick their spouse. So there's eight left. And then the, that applies as well for the next one. I can't pick that person or their spouse. So basically two people come out every time because I take out the person I picked and their spouse. And so what I've done is just set it up like a permutation, but it's not actually that because it's, we're really making groups. So there, there are, this, is, this is essentially overcounting the number of outcomes there. Are. I need to correct for this by dividing the, out the number of ways there are to rearrange three people. I've got three slots. I'm going to divide by three factorial. Okay, because then this kind of three factorial is six, so that cancels nicely, and eight times 10 gives you 80. Likewise, and this this is a kind of a more standard approach doing the total minus, but if you can also wrap your head at some point around the logic of this, it's, you can often be quick when you're when you're picking things like this. You're just taking two people out every time. You're doing it as if it's a permutation, picking what you want with how many options you have, and then always dividing by the number of slots factorial. Like if we're make, making a committee of four, two, three, four, and we still didn't want a married couple. Yeah, maybe 10, 8, 6, 4, divide by 4 factorial.